Before we continue with what, where we stopped yesterday, I wonder whether there are any questions. I, I think there was a question about state variables, and maybe you can explain it exactly what, what you mean. If there are any other questions, please ask them now, right? And then we continue. And also from the other campuses, if there are questions, please ask them now, right? We, we just make some time for the questions. Okay, and I'll give you the micro. You just explain what you exactly mean. No, uh, we we had a doubt here on how we we find the state variables, how we difference them from the other variables. Okay. This is a step I will explain today. Yes. Isn't it? Okay. Shall we wait until we do this step? Okay. That's what step is it? Step three. It's the next step, right? Okay. Any other questions from the campuses? Ah, very good. Thank you. Then can I have more light here at the front? Maybe I think there are lights. It's not possible because the transmission. It's Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, 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 good. Okay, um, okay, so no questions from the other campuses? No, okay, then we continue. We have not quite finished step two. Remember in step one, we were talking about the phenomenon, and some of you were in the morning at the site, at the river, I was there, I found it very interesting. It's a very good problem and important too. So the step one about the urbanization and, 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 and the flood effects, and the step two was about the, the mental model, con, uh, conceptual model or mental model, which means we need to be clear about the causality. What causes what causes what causes what? And here we have some effects, but they're not yet linked. Right? We, of course, we could translate these cause effects into equations, but then not sure whether it's going to work if they're not linked. Right? Let's try how to, to link the entire system. Let's go through, through it again. And I think what is still missing is somehow the socio part of it, what the, eff the incentive of the, of the uh, shopkeepers. Urbanization increases floods because of reduced infiltration. Correct? Now, uh, do we have a blue pen? Yes. What I'm asking here, of course, where? Where? Where is that? Where? At the site where we were today, this is not the case because this is the outlet of a 13 square kilometer catchment. The water comes from upstream, not from the place where the shops are. Okay? So urbanization where the shops are does not increase the floods. Okay, so I'm not sure about that one. Are we talking about the urbanization in the catchment or locally in the, in the, where, the, where we were this morning? I think we talk about the things locally, right? So we remove that. You agree with that? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. No, this is... Eveto, go ahead. Yes, please voice your concerns. <laughs> I guess um, the growth urbanization have uh, interference in the, like it, it's a part for the reason for the floods. Of course, the land use upstream, but uh, I guess the impermeabilization uh, there in the central market have influence. It has influence in the, in the floods. It's because the floods is not only by fluvial floods, but also pluvial all of from the urban drainage system that they do not support and, and flood. <laughs> I don't know yeah, because uh, like the, the, uh, the pipes are clogged with trash. And also because we have like small streets, if we have larger streets, maybe the flood will be... Shallower, uh, yes. less deep. Yes, exactly. And okay. as you have 
Okay, you defended your case very well. We keep it. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, uh, yes. We have both. Both, yeah. Both. Yeah, but we're not talking about the catchment now, are we? We're talking about the local place, at the market, where the shops are. Mm -hmm. What do we want to model? Do we want to model their, their surface city in the catchment or where the shops are? Where they're two the different things. Are. They're not yeah. Maybe they're correlated, but... Where the shops are. Where the shops are. Anyway, but maybe they are correlated. Maybe you say both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay. First thing. Second thing. Population growth increases the urbanization. And the, this means pollution. Pollution. Um, okay. We can agree with that. Canalization increases the floods. What is canalization? Canalization, I don't understand that. Okay, who's going to defend that? <laughs> it's the uh, changes made in the natural course of the river. Like so, uh, uh, so if you constrict the flow, the discharge increases. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah How I much? Two percent? Mm. Are you saying when you have a wider channel, the discharge is less? Mm. Maybe a little no, bit. Not, not, not the discharge, but the yeah. When you have uh, concrete channels. Are we talking about discharge or water levels? Water levels. Ah, water levels. Yeah. Okay. And uh, because like they... And then through siltation is still a different story, right? Because we, even without siltation, if you constrict the channel, you increase the water level, I mean, a lot, obviously, because of the cross-sectional area. Yes. I think this is maybe the main effect, right? Then we call it water levels. Because, of course, we need to be clear whether we model discharge or water level. And another thing is, th is that they strict the channel. Like, we don't have the curves and the meandros anymore. The curves. So these, yeah, so these will increase the, the velocity, the speed of the water in the channel. And then the and then wave gets a little steeper. Yes. A little and bit. Yes, uh, yes. And also you have a lower time of concentration in the catchment. Yeah, but again, are you thinking about the site yeah. locally or mm -hmm. upstream? Because mm -hmm. if you talk about the reach of one kilometer, the effect is very small. But if you look at the catchment upstream, yes, or I understand hydraulically that, of course, the channelization increases then. But locally and upstream is not the same thing, right? Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> but of course, the constriction of the cross-section that's a very local thing, of course. Yeah. That's local, mm -hmm. right? And that's, as we can see, it's very obviously a, a very important effect. That, that's, okay. Then we have um, floods increase the economic losses. Okay, we can also uh, agree with that. And, and that's it. I still don't under understand how the system works now, right? This chain of events. One thing leads to another. Uh, what about the, the, the uh, urban floods? Shopkeepers do not move. About moving of the movement of the shopkeepers, they want, don't want to move. Where is this here in this mental model? Afraid of losing clients, do not allow flood marks. Okay, we, we need to put this into the model. If we don't have it in the causal, in the, the, the mental model, it's not going to be in the equation and not in the results, right? So somehow, there can, can somebody come up with some cause effect regarding the movement of the shopkeepers? Well, um, so if the shopkeepers move, they lose clients. Is it something that we could say? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If shopkeepers move, keepers, They lose clients and therefore income. We will probably not model the number of the clients, will we? No, but we will model the income, of course, right? 
and income. Okay, so what are the things we have here? We have here urbanization and population. You could, the first two lines, you could say population growth increases floods, if you combine the first two lines, okay? Canalization increases the water level. Okay, so why do people ca canalize the, the, the stream? If you want feedbacks, it should not just be left alone, then it's an input. We can do this, but then it's not part of the model. So why do people, is there, are, are there rational people that they canalize the, or not? Which is stupid, people 50 years ago. <laughs> no, they were not, I, they're very clever. I guess uh, Mario can confirm it or explain better, but <laughs> I guess they thought initially <laughs> that we'll uh, carry the flood downstream. <laughs> well, reduce, uh, reduce the water level, not, not increase. Yeah, yeah, but I guess... Inc therefore, reduce the water levels. And and uh, like uh, they they did it to um, to carry the water uh, faster, and then uh, avoid to the water level reach uh, to a high level. Okay. But then in the end of the system, there is no cap uh, capability to um, put out all that flow that comes too fast, and then <laughs> okay, and something now, something like this. Now we have on the whiteboard canalization increases the water levels. But actually the opposite is the case, isn't it? That's why they canalized it, to reduce the water levels. Water levels reduce, okay. Not increase, L reduce. Would you agree? Yeah. Locally. 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 But increase the maximum flows downstream. Okay, y yes. So in hydrology we have the interesting aspect there's upstream and downstream. And in social hydrology, this is also very interesting because usually there's a conflict between upstream and downstream. The upstream people produce a, something and the downstream people pay for it. Right? So that's, that's an interesting conflict. Very often we have that. Now we need to get our head around what we do with this downstream upstream thing. If we want it's step three state variables, we need to decide. We should have decided before actually what the control volume is. We were not very specific. We did, didn't say just the marketplace, or did we say the catchment, or did we say upstream and downstream, two, two sections. We need to decide on that. We did not, that's why we're kind of confused now, right? We were not clear, and we're paying for it now. But we're resolving the problem. What do we do? Do we want just locally, the entire catchment, two sections, upstream and downstream, but I'm warning you, if you two sections, it gets a little complicated. So, <laughs> what do you think? It's possible, but it's just more complicated. What, any, any suggestions? Maybe local. Just local. Meaning local, that the, lo if we just have a local treatment, then the downstream effect is not part of the model. It exists, but we're not modeling it, okay? So, canalization decreases the water levels locally. So uh, why, so it's a good thing, canalization, is it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, but we are now only thinking in our model domain. So we are not allowed, we have the discipline that we just think in our model domain, and we don't think outside, because it just confuses us. Later, next step, we can do that, okay. right? Or we can include it, then we can talk about it, but we need to decide, include or exclude. I think exclude. Exclude, right? Just local, make it simpler. And over the weekend you can include it, right? Just extend it. So uh, canalization increases the, increases the water is not true locally. And also in step one, we have not added the control vol volume, what we sh should have done. This is just the, the control volume. It's the city center, correct? Yeah. Only. So, urbanization increases the floods. You're still defending that. We keep that. <laughs> no, actually, I think that we have to 
to increase the canalization increases or decreases water levels because it's not canalized only in the market it's canalized in the entire river so even if uh, if it if it were we were going to see only locally even that does not decrease the water level because upstream it's canalized and the water level will increase in the in the place okay so as the entire river is canalized, I think we should remove it. OK. <laughs> I don't fully understand what you're saying, but I'll try to repeat it so, so you hear whether I okay. understood it properly. We don't only do the marketplace for the control volume, but the entire catchment. And we assume that it's homogeneous. Canalization in the marketplace, canalization upstream less infiltration on the marketplace, less infiltration upstream. Is this what you're meaning to say or not? Yes. OK. You're in agreement? OK. Not downstream, just the upstream until the marketplace. No. OK, good. Okay. So city center and 13 square kilometer catchment. Correct? Upstream. OK. So, urbanization increases the floods in the catchment, okay? And ah, we have make an assumption, the assumption that, um, assumption, catchment is homogeneous. So, urbanization, upstream, urbanization in the city center, same thing. Uh, change in the cross section, upstream, downstream, same thing. Okay? We can do that. We just assume it's homogeneous. A good thing. Population growth increases urbanization and therefore increases the floods. Canalization increases the water levels and also the floods and also the discharges because of the, because of the routing. Okay? Floods increase the economic losses, okay? If the shopkeepers move, they lose clients and the income, okay? Do, now we need something, if they, why do they stay there? Because they have, they don't lose clients, they have an income. If they are close to the river, they have better income as if they move away, right? Could, would you agree with that? So the income, decreases with the distance of the river. Which is the same thing here. Okay, anything we are missing here? So, who is deciding about the urbanization? Is this external or is it part of the model? Would you like to, the urbanization and number of people to be internal or external? Okay, it's our choice, right? We can decide that. How many people, the growth of the population in the area? Is this. Well, what, what is the population? Is this the population in the, in the market area or just general? It's the same, right? Density. Something like density, yeah, which is population, yes. Close to the rivers, close to the rivers we have no the residential houses, more shops. So the density is a temporary density uh, linked to the economy, but not to the livelihood. Because people are not living in these streets. They are only working or trespassing. But then we can use like a housing instead of density of people. Like the number of houses. buildings, yes, or house, not the density of people if we have this problem, no? Okay. There before we said it's homogeneous, the, everything is homogeneous in the catchment. Now we're saying it's not homogeneous in the... Of course it's not homogeneous, but we could assume it's homogeneous, right? 
in the model. <laughs> You're shaking your hand, of course, it's not homogeneous. But do we want to have the next step, state variables, right? So we need to decide what, what, what the mental model is. Do we want to have the shops, number of shops separately from the population or part of it? You could say if there's more people in the city, there's also more shops next to the river. You could say, or you could say it's two different entities. Same thing, make it simpler, for now. Okay, so we say, are you, is this acceptable to you? Okay. So if there are more people in the area and in the market area, Floods are increasing, but floods increasing the economic losses, canalization increases the water level. So what is still a bit in the air is the canalization. So but my question was urbanization, number of people, external or internal to the model? External. <laughs> To decide to be external and not internal, well, external should be re related to the driver, uh, externally affecting the basin. Okay. Okay. Now. You. Okay. You. You please. <laughs> so uh, what we're talking about um, is. Why should we use internal or external? Yes, that's the it's question. It's the question. <laughs> yes. So why we should use internal or why we should choose external? Okay. When it's internal, you can simulate the dynamics of that. If it's external, you just put it's an input. You, you just take it from data and you don't change it. It's not a result, it's an input. If it's internal, it's an output. Do you want to learn about that or just take the data and input it into the model? That's what we're now discussing. But maybe it's a compromise. Maybe the population in the entire catchment is external and the number of shops in the market area is internal. So we separate, we split yeah. it. Does um, it make okay. sense? Okay, this makes sense. Sorry. So, okay, let's say. Number of shops, internal. Number of people, external. Okay, you happy with that? Good. So, the, the loss of infiltration in the catchment area has to do with the number of people, not with the number of shops. It's external. So you will not simulate with the model infiltration dynamics, just imposed. Okay? The movement of the shops, that's internal. There will be interesting dynamics. Okay? Um, I still, uh, one open end is the canalization. Canalization increases the floods and doesn't link to the rest of the, of the mental model. External, internal. So will the shopkeepers decide whether the, maybe indirectly through yes. lobbying? Yes, mostly, right. I mean, not personally. Of course, they don't have the political power, but indirectly it could be a mechanism that public awareness and it can, comes up as a political issue and people look at the shopkeepers, they're unhappy, let's do something about this channel. So the canalization has a number of influences, and one of the influences is the shopkeepers. So, um, so um, if the shopkeepers are unhappy, meaning making losses, they help making their channel wider. Is this a mechanism you could envisage? Wider, deeper, bigger cross-section. 
because it's good for them, because it lowers the water level. Okay? We can make the sensitivity of that, we can decide about the parameters, how big their control is. Maybe it's just a weak dependence, then we make a flat relationship. Okay? But then it closes the, the, the circle. Okay, so then we say, here we could say, um, uh, economic, if the shopkeepers have a lot of economic losses, they lobby for a wider channel. If shopkeepers, lots of losses, lobby for bigger channel. Could be wider, deeper. Okay. Are you happy with that? Good. Next step, three. Um, we need space. We don't have another flip chart, do we? Yes, or can we draw on the wall? Not yet. Not yet. Next weekend. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I don't mind it so much. I'll, I'll be gone on the weekend, so. Well, we can't write on the back unless we project it. In that case, you would have to take a photo. Ah, what we can do. Can, can we take a photo of that and project the photo of that? Okay. So. Take a photo and project this. It's good to have a photo of that anyway for posterity <laughs> for the next million years, right? Three D, yes. Three D, yes. Cinema. Felipe, can I just? Uh, can ah, you could, okay. It's like. You, of course, you don't know what surface is <laughs> when you turn it around. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's, that's very good. No, no, it doesn't work. So we need to go, go ahead. Uh, well, we can still leave it. I, I draw for the, put it back, okay. It's called, this is called in English a skeleton in the cupboard. Okay, we use the space better. We. You can, but we, what we can do is just can remove the top because you've taken a photograph and we'll use this, use this later. But I mean, it's not static, it's dynamic, it's mobile. Okay, very good. I'll just, thank you very much. Remove that. You have a photo, right? Yes. And we move on to step three. Okay. We, we have to do the, casual, the causal loop diagram. Oh, very much so, yes. We need to do that. Okay, step three, state variables, correct? Step three, is it state variables? Yes. Pollution, infrastructure, reservoirs, wealth, population, values, institution. Okay, now, uh, I'm uh, step three. I'm now accepting state variables. How many do we want?
many of you, as many as possible, or as few as possible. If the more you have, the more complex it gets. At some stage, you don't understand what is happening. So what I usually recommend, what I usually recommend when building a model, start simple, and once this works, extend it. Don't start complex, then you get bogged down, spend a year of your life just in trying to understand the model, and you get frustrated. Start simple. Try to master it. Once you've done, go up to the next step. OK? So start simple, add complexity is my recommendation. Three state variables, not more than four. OK? Three, not more than four state variables is my recommendation. OK, suggestions. Money. Do we need money? Yes, yes. There's economics involved. And we call G, stands for gold. OK, because M, M for, for money is already taken for memory. That's G for gold. OK, well, this is what gold is it? The, is there the money of what? Of the shopkeepers, right? So it's the money of the, money of the shopkeepers. So it's, I would say, is it a flux or is it a state? Is it how much they have on their bank account or is it how much they earn per year? There are two different val values, obviously, right? I would recommend how much they have. And this is a typical example of a state variable. It's the state. And then when they have an income, you can model very nicely. DG on TT is the change of how much money they have with time. And it, this is negative if they have to pay, if they have a loss. It's positive if it, they have an income. It's a very nice balance equation. Very easy, right? If we don't think about inflation and other things, it can be included, but it's more complicated, OK? So we all agree about the money of the, their shopkeepers. In total, all of them. What next? Internal variables, right? And this is internal. External, we can, we can have internal variables, and external, which is forcings. Forcings, we can have many, but we need data for them, because it's an input to the model. We can have many. That's not a problem, as long as we have data. It's, uh -huh. Also, a, about the state variables. How do we select the state variables, the internal, for something where we want to represent the dynamics, what we're interested in? Number one, consideration. Number two, consideration. Ideally, something we can measure or have data for. Something we have data or have uh, uh, what we can measure. If you have awareness and you cannot measure awareness or vulnerability and you don't know what it is, it's not a very good variable. You want to measure, have number of houses per square kilometer. Take a satellite photo and count the number of houses uh, over the past 30 years. That's a good variable. Or discharge, if you have discharge measurements of water level. That's a good variable. But things you cannot measure, it's not so good. Because you, you pay, now you can write it down, no problem. But in the last step, in step seven, you're paying for it. You, you just say, oh my god, why did I choose this variable? I cannot test it. So preferably, variables you can test. Much better. OK? So money, we can, well, we, Potentially, we can test it. We can ask the shopkeepers about their tax situation, right? Their tax declaration. Uh, so what, what else? What else? Discharges or floods, water levels. Population growth. Make, please make suggestions. What would be the next variable? Water. Um, the number of shopkeepers in the area. Number of shops or shopkeepers in the area. Yes. Or density of shops, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Shop density. D for density.
Okay, very good. What else do we need? You can just maybe underline what we have here. Um, losses, right? We have them. Income, we have it. Income, distance from the river is the density. Losses. Population growth is different, right? This is external. Okay. And this is something that's no longer the case, right? Okay, next, next state variable. Uh, we are thinking here of if we choose water level or number of floods for, to represent the flood. Okay. Um, because we are saying that maybe number of floods is easier to measure, but the, it do not represent the intensity of the flood. Well, I mean, as hydrologists, we know that number of floods of a given water level, right? But maybe it's easier something... Uh, maybe we can consider the number of events up to a determined threshold. I mean, for example, events uh, from... For more than 100 millimeters of rain. Yes. I mean, there, there's a number of ways we can model that. There's not one better way. What I personally like is the mean annual flood. This is something quantitative, mean annual flood. So if you have the maximum annual discharge in every year and you take the average of that is the mean annual flood, right? And when you have less infiltration, the catchment that will increase. And of course, you can think the 100 year flood is different than mean annual flood, but that's a subtlety. Mean annual flood discharge. And if we want to look at changes in the cross section, we would have to deal with discharge and with water level separately. What if canalization is something you, that interests you? Narrower and wider section. I think it is in our story, right? So mean annual discharge. Where? In the mean annual discharge in the city center. Okay. We call it Q for discharge. Q is mean annual flood discharge in the city center. Q. Mean annual flood discharge in city center. OK. What else? What about the canalization? So um, we have, let's underline what we have. Urbanization increases the floods. We have that. Flood discharges. Flood discharges. Population growth included urbanization. We have urbanization, which is the no, we don't have that. Comes into the water levels and discharges. Number of people external, shop with lots of losses, lobby for bigger channel. Okay, so we have the discharge, and the discharge is affected really by the, by the infiltration of the catchment and the population of the catchment which is uh, not part of the model. It's external, I think, isn't it? We do not model the population. So we do not model the infiltration, the catchment. So the mean annual flood discharge is external, not internal. Would you agree with that? OK. This is external. What about the water levels? at the market site, internal, because we want to model the canalization, correct? W for water level. Mm -hmm. 
associated water level. And the, and the relationship between water level and the mean annual flood discharge is uh, the rating curve, of course, right? What else do we need? We have now the water levels. Let's underline the water levels. <coughs> Water levels. Okay, how do we relate the water level and the? Um, yeah, somehow. Okay. How do we quantify this canalization? This canalization, the cross section. Do we need something like as a cross sectional area? Or not? cross-sectional area? Yes? Then when we write down the equations, we may figure out, we may find out probably they, we can drop one of the variables because there's just a unique relationship between two variables. We can just drop one of them. and. To, and Make it implicit, right? And I don't know yet. It depends on the shape of the equations. OK, urbanization increases the flood discharges. So we need urbanization, the population in the catchment. OK, population in the catchment. That's external. P, population in catchment, which is external. Urbanization, we have that. This is the, the population. Population increases the urbanization. We don't, it's included. And pollution, I don't know what to do about pollution. No, okay. Canalization increases the water level. Yes, that's the area. Floods increase the economic losses. We have the floods we have, right? The shopkeepers move away, density changes, so the shopkeeper density we have, then they lose clients and income, meaning they lose income, the number of shops is internal, which is density, the number of people, which is P, is external. If shopkeeper have a lot of losses, they loss for a bigger cross-sectional area. We're in business, right? Okay, one, two, three, four variables internal, which is not bad. Okay, now about your question about state variables. No, it's okay. It's okay? Yeah, yeah. okay. Step three, anything else we need to do in step three? Yes, what? I have a doubt, but it's not exactly for the easy study case, but you said that we use M for memory. So that means that usually we use memory in, in this type of models, in social hydrological models. So how do we measure memory? Because you said that we have to have variables that we can really measure. So yes. I was wondering, how yes. do we measure memory? Yeah, very, very valid question. It's difficult to, difficult to measure. Uh, in, in the flood case, in, in this paper, we will bring that up in, in a couple of minutes, for, no, in probably in an hour or tomorrow, when we talk about the parameter estimation. We, there, there are questionnaires where we ask people whether they think flood is a problem. And then we compare different time slices. And this gives us an indication of the memory. It's a social variable. So you don't measure it by the pressure transducer, you measure it by questionnaire. Okay. Water level is easy to measure. I appreciate that, right? Do we need memory? In, in our... In our in our model or not? Maybe not. No memory. Okay, good. Um, okay, step three. Sure. Including memory and not or not including it means simpler or more complex. Yes. Yes. So that is very important to freeze uh, to, to to fix. Yes. So memory factor is a kind of big complexity in a social hydrological model or, or, or a, a big one? The, uh, the memory uh, results in some momentum. Uh -huh. If you don't have memory, 
processes are instantaneous. Yeah. So it means there's a flood because of the lobbying. The next day, the city council builds a wider channel. Yeah. Right? If, this, if you have no, which we currently have. So the results will be, will be immediate. Yeah. And if we have a memory, it's a delay. So, but only to, 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 to finish sure. up the question. Sure, sure. Uh, we have a binary state with or without, could be one approach, with memory or without, or memory. without memory. Yes, yes. Or can we have a transition or a fuzzy transition in between nothing and 100% of acceptance of because memory, it's difficult to, to, to say we have no memory or we have memory. So, do, do, do you agree that's related to people? Sometimes we have a kind of memories. The problem is to quantify what is the level no. of memory being used in yes. the decision making. No, so, I, I look at it slightly differently. Okay, that's a good uh, question. The, I think. The, there's the level of memory can be treated much more simply because you have a, a time parameter, a time constant in the memory, how quickly people forget. And if they forget very quickly, it's the same as if you have no memory. And you're saying fuzzy between memory and no memory means like a short memory. Or you want to make it a two component process, but it's much simpler if people forget quickly, a short memory. But no memory, zero, zero time constant or infinite. If there's no memory, it's the same thing. Okay. We, we will see when they run the model, we may find out without a memory, it doesn't work properly, right? And it's possible. I, I don't know. We, we have to try it out. But of course, memory is, a, is an important thing. OK, we are finished with step three. We have no values. Well, the values are implicit because the values of the shopkeepers is there, right? Money is their value. Mediating variables, maybe one of the variables is mediating, possibly, but we'll see. Okay, step three is finished. Now, step four, causal factors that affect the state variables. Um, okay, so I suggest we write down the state variables as differential equations. We can also have algebraic equations if you prefer, but I would start with differential equations. Is a function of, right? As we had in this three-body problem, you remember yesterday afternoon. So that's step four. And it's only those four variables, not the externals, of course. Step four. D, G on D, T is a function of. D T on D T is a function of D W huh, on D T is a function of and D A is a function of. Yeah. But maybe we need to change this. The good thing about the whiteboard, you can remove it if you, if you choose to change it. OK. Um, let's start with the money, with gold. It's easiest, right? Um, what variables will contribute to the income in a positive or in a negative way? W. Yes. W. This is the losses. What about the density? The itself, also. Or the, the density, if if they are not in the area, they will make less money, right? What about the wealth itself? Is it will the the income per year, the annual income, D G on D T is the annual income. Will this depend on much how much money they have? Maybe not, right? Okay. Uh, what else? That's it. OK, good. DD, how many people live there? The DD on TT is the annual growth or shrinkage of the number of shops in the area, whether they uh, 
have an incentive to move away, close the shops, lose the clients, or come in. So what, by what will that be controlled? By? It will be controlled by much money, how much money they have, or how much money they make. How much money they make, right? So it is F1, right? If they make a lot of money, then it increases. Logical. So what, what else? The, their, um, what else? That's it? For this equation, we can use the external variable or not? Oh, very much so. Yes. Yes, we can use the other variables, the external. OK. So I think that depends also of the P, the population. Population. So does the, 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 going back to the first one, does the first one, how much money they make per year, depend on the discharge? No, it really depends on the water level. Does it depend on the population? If there are more people in the area, do they make a better profit? Yeah, okay. So let's put P here. But this is, ex this is external. Okay. Now here, uh, are there any external variables this change in the density depends on? Does it depend on water level? Not only through the profit. Does it depend on the population? Only through the profit or anything else? Does it depend on, certainly not on the discharge, not on the population? Your question was whether we allow, allow any external variables here. That's it. So F2 is just F1. You're saying the change in the density is proportional to the annual income, which in case we don't need a differential equation, you can write an algebraic equation. I have a doubt because, for example, Sorry. You have a doubt? Yes. Uh, it, it depends of the increase of the money of the people, but also depends on the water level separately than the, the increase of money, not? Separately, because of the perception. If there are lots of water levels and maybe water marks, then shop, the clients will not go to the shop. So yes. it may depend on the water mark separately from the income, correct? I, I think so, but okay. I don't know what do you think. I, th I think lots of people nodding. Okay. Yes. Good idea. Water levels. Okay. That's it. We can always change that, right? If we come back. Then the next, the water levels. Um, maybe for the water level, it's not a good good idea to write down a differential equation, right? Because water level is not something where you have a balance equation. So I think for water level, we need an algebraic equation, okay? It's a function of course of Q and A. Anything else? What, what about this uh, Q? Is external or not external? We have the urbanization. Is this Q external or not? Or not? But the effect of the population on the discharges, we currently do not have, because we made Q external. Should we make Q internal? to allow for the surface ceiling, the loss of infiltration of the, uh, by increased population. 
There would be no feedback loops with sort of a link to it. So we have a choice, right? We, we can include the effect of population increase on reduced infiltration and therefore increase discharges from the catchment. One possibility. Or we can just say Q is external. Yeah, but then population we also have in the other equation for the shopkeepers because if we have more people that make a better business. So why don't we make Q internal? Okay, just try. Five variables, it's already a lot, okay? Uh, but, but this is algebraic, so we only have them. Now maybe actually also algebraic. Okay, let's do. Water level depends on uh, discharge, on the area, and anything else? No. Maybe on. Okay. The change in area with time, which is a slow process. Ye yesterday we were talking about slow and fast processes. The change in the cross sectional area is a slow process. Um, so the d a and d will be a small number, close to zero, right? Of small, slightly above zero, slightly below zero. Takes decades to change that. Will be a function of what? Of the population in the area? Then it has to do with the shopkeepers. With what element of the shopkeepers would control, would, what, who, what element of the shopkeepers would do the lobbying? Their, their annual income, their total budget, their, their, how many there are, the density, or their losses. What would motivate the shopkeepers to lobby for a bigger cross-sectional area? Just how many there are, their losses, or both? If there are more people, they can lobby better, so the density will come in. And what about the, the, the financial thing? What aspect will control or motivate the increase or decrease of the cross-section? Hmm? G, G. F1. So if, it's, if they make a lot of profit, they will not lobby. If they make losses, they will lobby. OK. OK. Now, what about the Q? It's a function of what? Population? Anything else? One question. Yes? The mortgage speculation in Brazil is perhaps one of the biggest in the world, the mortgage speculation. And uh, really, they are loving when they are gaining or when they are losing. So my question is, it is possible to introduce a proxy variable or some select factor in some of these relationships? Because in this case, in our case, it's perhaps Maybe different. Yes. Mortgage. You all know what mortgage is. A mortgage. A mortgage, if you, uh, if you uh, buy a house, but take a loan from the bank when buying a house. So the house does not belong to you, it belongs to the bank. And you can live with it. And the value of your house changes depending on the economic development. And then the owners of that money, the funds, they also do lobbying, what Mario has been saying, in order to increase their profit. They're just using your houses, or more, more mortgage. The word is spelled. Mortgage, right? You've got it? Okay, uh, Mario wants to introduce a, a, fussy, a, a proxy variable for mortgage. 
which has to do with what? With uh, how is it linked in this system here? Right. Here is for the interest rates, because Brazil is one of the biggest. Which has to do with the cross-sectional area, or with what? How, what, what will it affect here? The effect that uh, they push the urbanization forward. Urbanization. This is one of the uh, canonical variable pushing forward the urbanization on. I, I, I fully understand, yes. So urbanization would be population, right? Yes. Well, that's external. So maybe we can factor in the mortgage into population? Uh, well, in our case, this is a reality. Yeah. But I think, generally speaking, it's, it's a very valid point. OK, so now we are with Q, the discharge, is a function of the population. Anything else? Shop density as well. Okay. So you're saying when there are lots of shops, there's more discharge? What's the reasoning of that? Why? Not sure whether I'm with you. So this is our catchment area. And this is the, the, the stream we're interested in, right? And the infiltration takes place here, not so much here. So maybe we can neglect like that. Of course it will in effect. In, in the sense of the Gaia hypothesis, everything affects everything. But if it's small, for simplicity, neglect it. OK, so the discharge only depends on the population. Which is good news because we can take it, make it external, not part of the model, right? It's simple. Okay, you, you're happy with that? Uh, did we forget anything here? Step four. Ah, causal loop diagram. We should have done this before this, actually. You said that, yes. Ah. OK, who would like to, to draw the causal loop diagram? I'm not going to do that. Who is going to do the causal loop diagram? <laughs> Let's vote for it. It's not fair. I, I'm Please. not sure if I know how to do it. Please. OK. Yes. Please. <clears throat> So at the top right corner, there's space for it, right? Okay. So you start with just with, you start with putting the variables in the middle of the causal loop diagram, and the external variable on the side. Okay. And it's just G, D, Q, W, A, and P on the side of it. Take a different pen, please. The pen is not good. People don't see just can you read redraw it? People don't see it. Very good. And the and the P on the on the side. Yes. Okay. Very good. Now we can all help. Where to draw the arrows? Maybe the arrows in blue? Or in black, yeah? I will do in black. Good. So I, I think it's easy now because we have already stated the equations. <laughs> so I think yeah. W affects G, D, D, E, P. Anything else in D? What do you think? A? Ah? In D? Ah, okay. So population. E D. 
DW is affected by Q and D. I think that's it. Okay, any comments? Please check. My God, it's so ugly. G and W. Yeah, yeah, the good. water level affects the the money, but the money doesn't affect the water level. No. Yeah, but but we have say here that the the money doesn't affect the water level; it affects the cross section. Yes, but this will affect the cross section, and the cross section will affect the water level. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Here. Okay, I think that we have considered this in the population because we have uh, linked the population to the pollution in the yeah. when we were saying okay. when we take the picture. <laughs> yeah, very good. I, I think that's it. It was quick. <laughs> okay, I just retrace the the P and the Q because you cannot see it very well. Okay, very good. Take a photo. Next step. Um, functional relationships. Mm, now it's getting mathematical. I'll make some space. We, we have photos, I think. Already. Can you take another photo? Because I just updated this a little bit. So we take the most recent version. I will remove step one and step two. I will leave step three for now and four. And now in the meantime, I really would like to have a volunteer for, do, for doing the step five. Right, so just, so what you expect, we have functions and we need to write down the actual functions for F1, F2, F3, okay, with parameters. Who would be willing to volunteer? Somebody who has not yet volunteered, so you don't qualify, you, you have already. Okay, somebody around here? Okay, what about you? I don't think they can. <laughs> Your no was not very strong, so. <laughs> Step five, yeah? And please use black, this, this two, really, because the others, you don't see them very well. So. Very good. Uh, the function one uh, could be, uh, the first, the first uh, variable, the water level, I think that affect in the 
uh, a positive way. So it could, it could be this way. Uh, the higher the water level, the bigger the income. The higher. This is what you're writing. Is a minus. Minus. Ah, very good. Uh, and D. This is it's complicated <laughs> because if we have more uh, shop shopkeepers, uh, we don't know exactly how it affects the the, okay. the money. Federico, can you bring up this your photo you took? Because we have already solved this problem. We have the causal, the mental model where we said one increases the other or decreases. Let's let's remind us what we actually said. Uh, half an hour ago. Right, what? and can you make it like, increase the contrast, maybe? Uh, fluid increase the Increase the contrast so we can. Can you do this? Okay, no. then, then, then we will just bring it up and we'll have a look at it. Okay, so we have here, it's about uh, the shop density. Very good. Urbanization, increasing the population, uh, about uh, the income, right? Yes. The losses. The last one. If shopkeepers move away, they lose clients and income. Income decreases with distance from the river. So the income decreases with... Ah, now how, how did we define this gold? Is it the gold for one shopkeeper or for the area? Right? Uh, we did not say this explicitly, for the area. So if there are fewer people in the area, they will have less income. Less. The, the, those people in the area will have less income. So it should also be negative, right? Yes. And? Or it could be divided by that, perhaps, right? No? Plus? Oh, yes, yes. Plus, okay. And uh, <laughs> times, times P. Okay. Okay, we, we, what we have not done yet, which we should have done before in, in the step three, we did not did talk about the physical units and we did not talk about the mm. parameter, the, the variable range. Yes. We need to do that, right? Um, okay, and th there, there are two possibilities. We can make everything dimensionless, and everything, we can allow everything to vary between zero and one and make dimensionless, which produces less headache, but we then we don't have the advantage of dimensional analysis. If everything is dimensionless, dimensional analysis does not help, right? So it's, on the other hand, it gets sort of cleaner because everything is between zero and one and non-dimensional. If you want to use data to compare it, you need to translate it anyway, because if you measure in, in, in dollars or in, in your currency, and it's between zero and one, you need to somehow translate one to the other. Okay? Okay, well, why don't you write it down like that? We can talk about the dimensions later. Okay? So okay. what is it? W times D times P. So the more clients they have, the bigger the income. Yes. And the more uh, shops they are in the area, the bigger the income on the marketplace. Okay. And then can you add a couple of like coefficients because probably dimensionally this will not be right. So we need yes. probably two coefficients. Uh, one in front of the W, 
Uh, I don't know how to, how to do a Xi, a Xi. Okay, Xi or Alpha or Beta, yes. Gamma. Yes. <laughs> this looks very good. Uh, alpha. What on beta? Tá melhor? D P. Okay. Very good. Okay. Next one. F. F two. Two. So uh, this is the relation. Uh, I have one doubt. I can I can repeat this equation or just put F one. You can just put F one. F one for now. Okay. It's the same. So it's just for clarity. Uh, shop density. So. Less double, oh. and if this is another equation, I think that we have to have uh, different betas. Yes. Yes. We have different betas. Yes. So the density, w when the water level increases, the density decreases. Okay? Okay. You happy with this F2 or not? Oh, uh, uh, we have to put another battle yes. before the F1. Yes. Any comments on F2? You happy with F2? Okay. Okay. Let's continue while you're at it. So F3. Uh, we're level, but well, we have we know this relationship. Uh, key. Oh no no no! It's wrong. <laughs> Uh, this is a channel, so we have to use the equation uh, of many, the many equation. Or it's it's a possibility to use the many equation, or, or you could just do it empirical, like a rating curve, and there are usually power laws. What? Pa pa power laws, pa power laws, like something to the power of. The power laws. Uh, Okay. Oh. That's a power law. Okay? Okay. Has nothing to do with politics. <laughs> yeah. oh. Thank you well, uh, I think it's easier for me to use the, the menu. I don't know how to use the power laws. Okay, Luis Manic. Sorry. No, no, fine. Uh, uh, I think it's what is this? It's right? No, no, it's... And inside the... the what is a two-thirds square root? I don't even know. What? What is this? The discharge, the area? I don't understand what that is. 
Uh, oh, uh, uh, lavatory is not sure what yes. a two-thirds root is. Yes. It's, I mean, maybe it's defined, but it's not the notation I'm used to. Ah, that's better. Yes, yes, it was wrong. wrong. Yes. Okay, and what is R H? Uh, the hydraulic radi radius. Yeah, but you also need to express it as a yes. function of something else. But the water level. Of, okay. Why but don't you make it a something a rectangular, wide rectangular yes, channel, we have so we can what the depth instead? Yes, we have to consider that uh, the channel is rectangle, rectangular to yes. simplify the model. And then it becomes water depth, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Then right. Replace R H by W, right? Okay. You can always assume a different shape, like parabolic, and then it's, it's exponents change a little bit. But we're not doing hydraulics um, now. Okay, so you're saying the Q is H divided by M, uh, what well, M, M is it? N. N, Manning's N, yes. Yes. And that's it? No, no. Uh, I, I didn't remember how to calculate the hydraulic hydros. Ah, I just assume it's a wide channel, then it's, double, it's equal to W. If the channel is wide, the hydraulic radius ah, yes, becomes yes, W, yes, yes. which is not the case. <laughs> but we're not doing the hydraulics now. It's yes. sort of trivial, right? But let's assume just W for now. Um, very good, yes? And yes. I, is, I is a constant, right? So we're in, but this is very good, yes? Very good. Yes. So uh, F3 is this, so that's uh, it, right. this yes. equation where N is a constant that depends on the material of the channel. Yes. And I uh, is also, we consider the uh, I is constant also uh, too. So, ah, photo better. So you need to invert it to get water level to the left if you want to do F3. F3 is explicit with respect to water level. Mm. Water level. We're doing F3 now, Oh, right? yes, 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 Let's yes. Explicit with respect to the water level. Yes. So it's just mm -hmm. inverted so you get water level on the left side and then the rest on the right hand side. Yes. But that's simple algebra. Mm -hmm. um, and we know how to do that, of course. But let's do it anyway. Okay, then okay. this is F3. Yes. Uh, we have to put the beta here too. Pardon me? We have to use the beta in this case. The beta? Where's, where's Manix N here? What? Manix N. Oh, yes. What happened to N? Yes. Yep. Right? This is F3. Oh. That's F3. Yes. OK. Very good. F4. How do we go time-wise? It's ready. End of the unit. Okay. Okay. It's been time to continue. F four. Four. So, uh, professor, uh, in this case, we do, we do not have to use the beta. No, it's no. n. Yes. With n. Okay. n oh. is the beta in our case. N. N and uh, I. And I and I is the is our beta. Yes. Okay. Correct. It's much better because it's physical. Okay. We think. 
Because um, you don't know I, you, don't, you teach lots of things you don't know. The cross section area. Anyway, so F4, what is that? I think that the more population we have, uh, the more cross section. Oh, no, no. It's, it's the inverse. Now, we are talking about the slow process of how the cross section is changed over the decades. This is the process we are now discussing, right? Correct? The widening uh, or narrowing of the channel. But if we, uh, if we have a lot of process that affect the cross area, yes. we would not uh, diminish the cross area. Ah, it's a very valid comment. Why would we narrow the cross-sectional area? Mm, you could say if you have a lot of population, they want to have the space. Yes. So P would reduce the cross-sectional area, maybe. They want to build I, I, there. Right? Because if we have a lot of population, we need a, a larger uh, channel, cross-section for the channel. Because it's going to be impermeabilized. Because they will impermeabilize the, 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 the catchment. Yes, they will avoid infiltration. But if you have uh, money, we can make implementation of other technologies. So it can reduce the 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 so the, wi the the dimensions of the channel. Philip, I think that was we were we were thinking in different ways because I was thinking that the population could produce more garbage, for example, and the cross area uh, would diminish because. Uh, would accumulate the garbage. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Okay. So one on p, maybe, maybe one on p. One on p. P to the minus one. One on p. One divided by p. Oh, perhaps. Is that just? It's, it's better. Yes, yes. But okay. Perhaps. which has the advantage that the cross-section doesn't go negative. Do you understand? Negative cross-section is not good. And we never have a negative population, so it, it fits. Are you okay? Okay, and the... Uh, I think that... Times? Why? P, one divided by P, P plus D. Why? Uh, in the first one, we didn't, uh, we didn't do the D times P. Ah, ah, you said plus D. Uh. Plus? No. So uh, we get the same discussion that I was that I was having with Felipe. Yes. Uh, Yes. Yes, Philip was thinking this way, but uh, I think that if we, if we have more uh, shopkeepers here, we have, for example, more garbage, so we have less cross action. Okay. So, following the devices of my colleagues.
What? Oui? But to have different battle. Ah. Okay. It's the same, it's the same. Sorry, I forgot what's FR. What? What is FR? Uh, equation F4, you have P, D, and FR. F1, okay. F, okay, it's G. All right, okay. Thank you. Oh. F1 is still missing, right? Do you have used? Have you used F1? No. Oh, should we oh. remove it or yes, or keep it? So let's think. Uh, if increase the money, mm, yes. Very good. Then we need still F five. Yes. Let me raise it here. No. No. But it's here. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Uh, it's here. I, I missed that. F5. Uh, so, F5. In this case, uh, we would consider the, the fact of the population and, for example, the urbanization. So, if we simulate a hydrological model, it could be it could increase the the discharge. So uh, I think that's enough. But to put a uh, just a bet and P. Uh, P trace. So uh, I think it's finished. Yes. Do we need to put symbols in this oh. uh, diagram? I mean, minus and plus. We could, yes. We, we, yes, we can do that. In the causal loop diagram, we can put minuses and plus. So one thing affects, one variable affects the other, but it could increase or decrease it. Could you add it? Can you put it in? Yes. So, thank you very much. You did a great job. Thank you. Now we have the equations. Fantastic. And, and you put in the pluses and the minuses. Thank you very much. Uh, so we do it together for clarity. In the causal loop diagram, for each, and maybe a black or a blue, right? Maybe blue even better. Yes. In Brazil. Correct, yes. <laughs> it's teamwork. And the weather forecast is announcing uh, rain for us today. It's already on the news tonight in, on TV? No. <laughs> okay, very good. Oh, okay. But of course you realize that these are not going to be the final equations. You will try it out and you will change them, right? But it's the first step, it's iterative. Very good. Can you put the minus and the pluses to the arrows? You okay. Understand? Let's we do together. <laughs> the first one, so is the G. What effect is the G? W. So negative. Then D and P both positive. D kind of P, P. Okay. Second is D and affected by F one and 
W. So D. That way is represented that G is F1 here by that arrow. Okay? So that is positive and W negative again. F3 is W. G on D. G on D. Right? No, I'm not sure. Really. This G on D, I'm not quite sure. G on D. Uh, that that was our thinking, because G uh, D G D T affects D, so I think that that variables affect us directly D, but no G affects that arrow for me. It's wrong. Yes, would you agree? Remove the arrow. I agree. No. We agree, yes. We remove the error, yes. So it's good to have the whiteboard, we can remove things. So I will add D and P. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. D and what? Uh, Roy? E fault to get? All right, thanks. <laughs> so, positive way, positive way. Three, W, K, Q, and A. W, A, negativo. Positivo, quanto maior a área, bigger area. Less F3, negative way. So, plus A, it's F4, and negative A, B, negative D, D, negative, and F1, that. Is well, that's confusing. Positive, negative. What? D A. W doesn't affect A. And now, them. One more. <laughs> uh, because of F1. F1, so negative way, and D and P. P. So, P negative to, oh, yeah. ah, it's cool. sorry. And D, D negative, all right. But here it's positive, and now. So in, step four, in step four, we don't have signs. Step four without signs. Don't. This equation does not say whether it's negative or positive, does it? This equation don't. No, this equation doesn't. It could be minus F1 here. Oh, all because right. it's, just, it's just a variable. So it, it, you need to look at these equations, whether it's positive or negative. Not this. This just all matches right. the number of the variables. All right, uh, okay. But not whether, it, what the effect is, whether it's positive or negative. Or, okay. But this but equation does. This equation. Yes, this is the one but, to use. But this way, D and P, are affecting negative way. Yes, negative. It's, it's but F1 here has D and P. Yes. Positive way. D and P, D oh, and P. It's both positive and negative, yes. All right. Yes. 
Can be either, yes? Uh, the people from Campina Grande, they are asking us uh, why D and P are being why? Why G and P, huh? In equation F1. They are asking uh, why D and P, they are they are being multiplied um, in the question. Ah. Uh, five okay. are Q. The name Q of are affected by P positive way. So, okay. Okay, that's fine. Everybody's happy? <laughs> Super. Well done. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Where? But we didn't. Uh, there's no arrow here. Ah, what happened? Because we don't use it. <laughs> G does not affect the area. Where's the area equation? Area it's four. Uh, F4. Okay, you can four. remove it. So money doesn't affect anything? Money. I think you can remove it, yes? Money right. does not affect anything. <laughs> so it's an output. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Now, is, is this a simplified model or does it represent all the complexities of the problem? S very simplified. For example, money will affect a lot of things. There. Explain it for everybody. Uh, others may have okay. a similar question. Um, this guy was questioning me why I put double arrow, positive and negative, to D, f uh, to from D to A, and from P to A. And the reason about that is because in the function four, D and P are considered two ways and one way negative and the other way is positive because of function one. And depending on where you are in the model, it could have a positive or a negative effect. We don't know. It depends where we are in the parameter, in the variable space. Okay. There's a second question from the, from the other group, one of the campuses. Why D and P is multiplied? Who did that? Who multiplied D and P? Okay, why? <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Uh, at first, because people told me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, my colleagues from. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's because uh, the density uh, is uh, the, how can I say, has the uh, population by an area. Yes. I, I try to rephrase what you're saying um, because I'm thinking along similar lines. If you have double the density of shops, the income will double. And if you double the clients represented by the population, also the income will double. So if you have double the population and double the clients, two times two, is the product of it. That's the motivation, right? I think it's a good idea. Okay, I was briefly talking about the simplification of the model, and there are a couple of things it does not capture. For example, the influence of the shopkeepers in the community. They are usually they're not very rich people, right? Because they're spending the time selling cheap things and making small profits. So the influence will not be very strong. You could think of a socio hydrological model where the influence or the power, power is the term for that, in, in this control volume could be modeled. Why does one group have less power than the other group? Right? There's also a question of equity. Equity means equity is a, a political goal, Every, everybody being equal, equal in the sense of having the same access to the resources and the same income. Of course, we are not equal, we're all different, but equity in the sense of economic, political 
equality. And this, of course, is not the case either, of course, right? Because people have very different influences. This could also be modeled. This is not accounted for here. But as I said, it's a simplification. And if this is what interests you, you could also play the relative, uh, simulate the relative power of, of groups in, in the community. Okay, so we have 10 minutes left, or how much do we have less? Than? Five minutes left. Perhaps we should go to the break now and have a coffee break. And it was a lot of work now. Yeah, we are working very hard. But after the break, we will continue. We are only at step five. We have two more steps to go. But these, are, these will probably not be as conceptual because calibrating the model parameters is not so much hard work. OK, so uh, half an hour coffee break. So half an hour coffee break, then we continue after, after the coffee break. We, are, we will be back at 4 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>